this is the start of the process of getting things fixed and changing things within the coaching staff. And the players are not holding back. And there's a lot here that has been said behind the scenes in the locker room. Some anonymous and some by players should be interesting. And the end part of the Eagles schedule, is it as easy as we all think it maybe is going to be? Let's find out. Yeah, what is going on, guys? I hope it's time to help everyone's trying to have a good day uh, this week. I hope, you know, your work week isn't as bad. I know everyone's in a pissed off mood. I know everybody wants answers at this point. And we're kind of looking at an Eagles roster right now that's pretty pissed off at what they have been dealing with with this coaching staff. Obviously, when you're winning football games, not having good first halves, you know, you just let things go because you are winning at the end of the day. Then you get blown out by two teams, get punched in the mouth two weeks straight. And then the finger pointing starts to happen. And then, you know, we had um, some news come out, and, and this was really of, of Derek Gunn um, really being behind the scenes in the locker rooms. I mean, there were offensive players after the game um, complaining about, you know, the route combinations and, you know, quote-unquote, look at our pass routes compared to the Cowboys' pass routes. Our pass routes take too long to develop. Dallas gets their... Uh, <laughs> shit out real quick, and it's true. Um, I think we're one of the big. I think we're one of the the lowest teams out there. We don't have quick passes. We don't have the intermediate route. We don't have the hot route. We don't have slants. We don't have anything that's quick. And Jalen Hurts' mechanics on you know just when we he turns for a dump off pass or a bubble screen, it just takes so long, and defenses just get there before uh, the play really starts. Um, you know, problem that I have is yes, there is times where Hertz has so much protection, you know, when, you know, Hertz will have 10 seconds of protection. I mean, a long time and Hertz can't find anybody open. And I'm sitting there because the camera's on Jalen Hertz the whole time on TV. And we're like, dude, how is nobody open? What's going on? Has been moments where Hertz has missed some wide open guys at times. You know, obviously last week, I mean, you had two drops from Devontae Smith, a crucial drop from A.J. Brown. There were some really good throws from Jalen Hurts last week. But I think some of the route combinations, I think there's been issues with route combinations that routes, you know, the combinations are just taking so long. The route is taking so long, and however the coaches have this thing, you know, how they're getting these receivers open, what their target is supposed to be for Jalen Hurts. I think that's been one of the, the biggest issues. Okay, one of the biggest issues. Now, Derek Gunn says uh, if there was one word to describe um, these players and how they feel right now, and they're uninterested. They're uninterested in this scheme. They're uninterested to even play. And once that starts happening, you know, the front office, whether it's Howie Roseman has to make changes for Nick Sirianni, and Nick Sirianni has to let go of some of this power, put more power into his offensive coordinator, uh, or they need to really just, and mo mostly into the defensive coordinator on, I don't know how much, much of the scheme is really going to change this week, but things have to change really soon. I mean, they have to change really soon. There was a couple offensive players um, that called this offense. This was anonymous, by the way. It all starts this way. Once a team starts imploding from the culture standpoint, which I think it's more than I think it's more than play calling. I think it's more of of the culture now is starting to they're starting to lose faith in the team. They're starting to lose faith in the coaches, in the head coach and Nick Sirianni. That this offense is too predictable. No, I mean, it, how many different plays do we have? Okay, this offense is the last-ranked team in motion. I mean, they don't do anything but QB draws, inside zones. I mean, nothing much. The fake handoff to this, the throw to Dallas Goddard, they've done a million times this year. There really isn't a back pocket play or anything that's more consistent that the Eagles do an end around a reverse a, I don't know something that's just a little different and obviously not running the ball enough is not definitely hurting your passing game because you got to have a successful run game to even run play action to do something different the routes take long to develop it just looks too predictable where if you're not running enough RPOs you can't slow linebackers down I mean this uh, you're not the defenses are not fearing what you're bringing to the table and changes have to be made and Nick Sirianni has his fingerprints all over this thing and 
when you look like this, I swear to God, every first half of so many games from the Philadelphia Eagles have looked almost the exact same. It's just ridiculous to where the Eagles had to be a fighting, resilient type team to get these second half wins. But sooner or later, your luck is going to run out. And to be honest, guys, like the Eagles haven't played a full four quarter perfect game. I'm not saying perfect as they have to be like killing teams by 40 plus. With this offense, there's no excuse. You should be getting 35 plus, 40 plus on a lot of teams right now this season. Uh, fortunately, the Eagles are 4-2 and two in the gauntlet. I think they've done a good job, but, I mean, as for a fighting, resilient standpoint, sure. As for have they played four quarters of good football? I'm not, you know, I'm not saying the first, second, third, or fourth quarters have to be perfect, but have they played four quarters of good football all year? No. There hasn't been one game. Now the players off this second loss, they're starting to talk, whether it starts anonymous, and then the names will start coming out. And then things are going to happen behind the scenes, and then those are going to get leaked, and then we're going to find out what this coaching staff is going to do for this roster because I blame the coaching staff more than the roster itself. We're 10-3, and three, Eagle fans do say, but 10-3 and three is a great thing, but it's also a bad thing because now it, it feels like you're starting to implode now at your most crucial point of the season where you have four games left, and you got to get ready for the playoffs. You're still trying to figure out shit as of right now, and it's just getting to that point. So Derek Gunn had a lot of behind-the-scenes type things. There wasn't a lot of names thrown out there, but obviously one name that was thrown out there was obviously Josh Wett that had a press conference. Okay, so Josh Wett was very upset, very, very upset with this defense, at least the past couple weeks. Okay, he said, quote-unquote, I'm tired of hearing you getting all these pressures and crap like that. You know, screw all that. You know me. I'm always a free spirit, but it's piling up, piling up, and I feel the season is slipping away from us, and it's getting me upset. Quote, unquote, we've got to take care of each other. Now, it says Josh Sweat sounds off on another substandard performance suggests the Eagles aren't playing team defense under Sean Desai. Okay? I hated this scheme since day one. It's not – and then look, Darius – Big play Slay has played really good the last couple weeks. Okay, he played good against Dallas. The P.I. call was bullshit, in my opinion. Um, but the off-ball coverage is just not working here. I don't care what. I don't care if you got Deion Sanders. I don't care if you have Patrick Peterson in his prime. I don't care what corner is back there. Okay, it's it's not going to work. You're you're, you're putting you're setting your players up to fail. Okay, why pay cornerbacks if you're not going to use them for what they're supposed to be used for? Why pay? Why draft defensive tackles in the first round? What's the point if your corners are going to be off the ball? It's like you're you're getting good players, demanding a lot of production out of that skill set out of that position group whether it's trenches whether it's defensive tackle but how can you do that if this first read is always open the quick passes the dump off passes we can't get five or six eagle helmets to the football this team doesn't swarm this team doesn't know how to blitz because they don't blitz enough they just when they blitz it's sloppy they don't know how to collapse a pocket together it's they're they're just not trained to be they're, they're just not tra they're not trained to be killers on the defense they're, they're really not this defense is subpar. It's looked worse than what it did last year. The one thing we just complained about last year, maybe two things we complained about last year was one, um, you know, obviously the, the blitz rate isn't as great, you know, wasn't good last year. It's a lot less. We actually blitzed more this year. Surprisingly, we have um, statistically. Um, but Jonathan Gann was letting teams come back after the Eagles. You know, Eagles have the number one explosive offense in the league, and and obviously, you know, Gannon was taking their, you know, his foot off, you know, off, you know, off their necks and and letting offenses breathe again, coming back into games, putting more pressure on your offense, and that what was pissing us off last year, all year until. He illegally tampered with the Cardinals for the head coaching job from the NFC Championship game to the Super Bowl and totally threw away the Super Bowl, got outcoached, outmatched. His play calling was subpar, and we didn't really get better from last year. We really did it. Um, you're setting up your players to fail. We could blame the players. There are players to blame. They're, 
Howie Roseman's to blame at some of this too, because your linebackers, you don't, you had to dip in the free agency four or five times for linebackers. You know, these defensive linemen are pissed off because they can't hit home. There's not enough time because there's no coverage within the first five to eight yards on every play. You're not going to win football games that way. It's honestly that bad. And I don't blame Josh Wett. It's honestly that bad to the point where the Eagles are ranked eighth in the league on first down eighth. Okay. They're last ranked on second down, third down and fourth down 48% conversions highest in the league. On this defense, completion percentage-wise, it's ridiculous. Obviously, the quarterback scramble drill. We we can't defend quarterbacks. We can't contain them because I don't know why they they they, they don't they don't want to blitz. They want they don't want to bring some extra pressure. They uh, they have no spy. I mean, they just either they don't have the players to do it or. Like I said, this scheme is is not working to the full vo volume to player strengths. And I figured that's what Desai was doing this past offseason when really he was literally giving every defensive player an opportunity to show to show what they have because the number one thing with Sean Desai is competition. But this is this is what Nick Sirianni wanted. He wanted the same scheme that Jonathan Gannon brought to the team last year. He said, you know what? It got us to a Super Bowl. Let's do it again. So for Josh Sweat to say all of that, it's it's annoying. The, the the talking is starting. It's already starting. Anonymous player, anonymous Eagles player, anonymous Eagles player. You have, I mean, I don't see them firing anybody this week. I don't see it because I don't think if you get rid of Desai, does it fix the problem? Probably not. If you get rid of Brian Johnson, does it fix the problem? I don't know. If they bring Frank, Frank Reich in and have to really uphandle this offense, that's the case. Because at the end of the day, guys, I mean, you're not going to get first seed. The 49ers already clinched. They're the first team to clinch in the NFC already. The 49ers are not losing another game this year. It's not going to happen. So Eagles are not getting first seed. The Eagles have to like literally win out to even get the second seed. And that's probably not going to happen either. Okay. And thirdly, like, let me tell you something. I mean, the Titans won against Miami. Okay. Miami lost a point. Obviously, Tyreek Hill was hurt. You know, they definitely suffered a little bit yesterday. The Giants won against the Packers. The Giants are one game outside a wild card spot right now with Tommy DeVito as quarterback, looking like the promising quarterback he is over there, surprisingly better than Danny Dimes, okay? This Giants, these two Giants games we have left might not be, and, it, and, and, it's, and it's so, I know the Eagles can play better, I, but, but them making the adjustments is what I'm worried about, that they're not going to make any changes, okay? The Giants might be a tougher matchup right now, and it's really sad to say. If they make no changes, this is only if they make no changes. I know the Eagles can run with the, uh, with, with, with DeAndre Swift. I, I know there's a run game here. You have the offensive line to do. Offensively, there's no excuse because there's no holes in your offense. You have a top three fucking offense in your hands right now, and you don't even know how to use them. It's It's... It's literally bubble screen. It's inside zone. It's fake handoff to, you know, throw to Goddard. It's it's the same plays we've been doing. Like, I can't even think. I can't even think that there's even more or less than 10 plays that are, are similar or different. You know, sometimes during the year we saw a back pocket play we'd never seen, like one of those little motion throw hand pitch and run type handoffs like I miss seeing plays like that like oh my god when you notice a new play from Brian Johnson or Nick however the hell this thing is going okay um it's 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 amazing you're like man I wish we could see more of that just more creativity and more motion and you know you have the players to do that and they just don't do it so the Giants I mean if the Eagles don't change anything, I mean, the Giants looked like they even played with more heart. I can't, even, I couldn't even watch another football game last night because of just couldn't even watch. I mean, I'm just like, man, like these teams are fighting. They're completing passes. They're running the football. And we are still just fucking stuck in the same spot we've been stuck in all year. And unfortunately, the past couple weeks, it has caught up to us. And now the players can't play this system the player the players are uninterested to play 
in this scheme anymore. There, there is no, there is no urgency to play in this scheme. Once that starts happening, then, and I believe that, I believe that Howie Roseman has the control over Nick and what he's doing. Okay, Howie Roseman is the one that who's active for the game, not active, and I think there's control over Nick on what Nick wants and keeping that control to Nick. Nick runs his offense on analytics, okay, with no adjustments. Play calls subpar. There's not I, – I, I don't believe the Eagles are holding plays in their back pocket for the playoffs. If anyone is still believing that at this point, please get your head examined. Go to the doctor. Get your brain checked, okay? Get your brain checked. Just saying. Um, And defensively? This is what Nick wanted. Nick wanted the same scheme from last year, and he hired a specific coach that can run the scheme. And guess what? Jonathan Gannon ran this scheme better than Sean Desai did. Okay? So that is your biggest problem. I mean, you're not going to change the defensive playbook that much. I mean, really, are you? I mean, be a little bit more aggressive, sure. But... Now you're like, I'm seeing the Giants at least win a game and just those teams are playing more, more heart and they're, there's better play calling. This, this team is the worst. This is the worst play calling in the whole National Football League. It's almost there. I mean, it's that bad. You win 10 games and now you're falling apart. And now you haven't played four quarters of somewhat, cons somewhat productive football. There has been one full game. Not full game as in perfect, but full game as in, yeah, they played it, they scored a couple touchdowns in the first, I mean, the first half or whatever. I mean, that hasn't happened this year. Now the players are going to start to open their mouths. Now the coaching staff is going to start to, because really, I got to say this, after the game, after that post-press conference was freaking horrible. I mean, Nick Sirianni did not say a damn thing about, man, I mean, nothing. I don't care about the, I don't care about nothing. I mean, he said nothing in that press conference. Nothing that was different. The same old shit, defending the players, defending the coaching staff. I mean, still, not even a little bit of like, you know what? Like, us coaches suck today. Like, I would have at least respected that a little bit to know, like, where this whole thing lands. It's the coaches to the scheme over the players before I start blaming the players so much they're put into this position to react and and be on you know and and, and play whatever they're doing whatever position they're playing offense or defense whatever the case may be they're following what the coaches want at the end of the day okay and Jalen Hurts had nothing different to say either. I don't care about th this is the standard. What we've been doing the last two weeks has been the standard. This is the standard. And that's the shitty part about this whole situation. And it sucks. So just want to go over all the background noise that's been going on with the Eagles. All the stuff from anonymous players to Josh Wett to the statistics of our defense and how disgusting it is and how worse it has gotten. 48% on converting on this defense on second, third, and fourth down. And I totally believe it because I've seen it. It doesn't matter. I'm nervous when it's third and 15. I'm even nervous when it's third and 25. This team can give up one play, one throw. It's all it takes. And the Giants, one game out of the wild card, it's, it, they, they can actually be in the playoffs this year. And the Eagles could be a fifth seed this year, and I don't know. I don't know if anything's going to change this week. And I hope with Seattle this week, you think Big Play Slay is going to handle DK Metcalf? You think he's, I mean, seriously, I mean, he's played good the last two weeks, but I mean, you got to do something, whether it's Drew Locker. I mean, seriously, you, I mean, it's a big headache. It's a lot to, it's a lot to digest, man, for this team to go through a game where they got their shit pushed in and then go into Dallas and get their shit pushed in once again. And it's horrible. So. That's all I got to say. Um, the, this whole thing is starting to, you know, we're starting to, you know, the players are starting to be pissed off and they're starting to lash out. I mean, the, the, the season is, is slipping away. It's slipping away entirely. There's, there's no doubt about it. There's one thing I've been saying in every video. The Eagles have time on their side.
if the Eagles get blown up by Seattle and they just are so prideful, which should already give you, like, I swear to God, like, if Nick has gotten away with how this offense has been running for weeks and still hasn't been reprimanded in the shit that's been going on, and these last two weeks still not getting reprimanded, man, this is a big problem. This is a bigger problem than Nick. This is a big this is a big problem. And Howie Roseman needs to put his foot down and change his ways towards his head coach and what he needs to do. Otherwise, if they get blown out by Seattle, I'm looking for a, not the players, the players will deal with in the offseason. I am looking for the first bit of this offseason that needs to be done. If the Eagles get manhandled by Seattle, they need to blow out this coaching staff from top to bottom. Besides Stoutland, besides Michael Clay, because special teams has been pretty damn good this year. I have to say Michael Clay has done a good job. Okay, blow out this coaching staff. Besides a couple positional coaches, whatever. Coordinators got to go. Both. Go. Gone. Change your ways. And if Nick is not willing to let go and change, the Eagles fired our Super Bowl winning head coach and Doug Peterson. And Jeffrey Leary fired Doug. Picked Howie Roseman over your Super Bowl winning head coach. Getting rid of Nick Sirianni will be no problem if this doesn't change. So we'll see what happens. Guys, have a great day. See you guys on the next one. Check some up, follows up. Peace out, guys. Peace.